What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi. We're back at Racing Greed with my B9S4. You guys know what that means. We're about to get some dyno numbers on this TTE 810 hybrid turbo from the Turbo Engineers. I'm still using integrated engineering software. That's a stage three plus with injectors E70 file. I was here last with the TTE 710. It did not quite work out as we had hoped. I was not able to get the peak performance out of that. I was seeing valve float up top. If you guys haven't seen that video, I highly suggest you do. I go over the explanation that Integrated Engineering provided to me on why I was not able to see the peak performance. I'm one out of their hundreds of customers that have experienced this, but because I wasn't able to get the performance out of the 710, one of the choices I had was to upgrade, and that's what I went with. I mean, when in Rome, why not just try to make more power? <laughs> so we installed the turbo. I went and logged it. The logs look way better than they did with the 710 right off the bat. So now we're here to see if it actually solved my problem. If integrated engineering was right, if it was valve float, and if this new larger turbo took care of my issues that I was seeing, let us see what this thing can do in terms of torque and horsepower at the wheels on this Mustang uncorrected dyno. Let's have some fun. that was three back to back to back runs on the TTE 810 and holy crap is it working so much better than the TTE 710 did. So what I'm going to show you guys is DinoJet calibrated numbers instead of Mustang numbers like I've shown throughout the entirety of this build. I don't think a lot of you picked up what I was putting down in terms of keeping it consistent throughout and it doesn't matter what calibration you're using as long as you use the same one throughout. I will be directly comparing today's results with the TTE 710 results on the second graph I show you so you guys are able to see exactly the difference in performance with what I was able to achieve with the 710 versus the 810. And here are my results with that TTE 810 using IE's E70 file 635 wheel horsepower 627 pounds foot of torque look at that graph so much healthier than it used to be you have the smallest of up and down here there's no way you're gonna feel that when you're racing though nowhere near Near what we were seeing with the 710 that torque ramps in at about 3700 rpm and then flows and tapers nicely off just a monster now making a ton of power and a ton of torque so what i'm going to do now is that i'm going to compare these numbers with what i've done in the past Eight ten versus seven ten. We gained forty one wheel horsepower and fifteen pounds foot of torque. Look at that graph. You can see how it just pulls so much higher and so much smoother. The 710, we were suffering from valve float where it was going in and out of power up top, in and out of torque up top. Now the one thing you guys really need to keep in mind on this one is the wheel size calibration was not correct with the 710. As you can see, it just falls off early. The 810 was done correctly, pulls all the way to 7,000 RPM. Now with that in mind, this spool can't be considered to be perfect. It's close, but not perfect. I want to say that the 710 has to move over to the right slightly. The 810 is what it is today. We verified that it's working correctly. So I want to say that full spool, I was seeing about 3,700 RPM with the 810. And if we were to shift this over slightly, maybe 36, 35, 50 with the 710. So now what we've seen what these hybrid turbos do against each other, I'm going to put up a stock turbo and show you guys the comparison there as well. 
Here's the third graph for you, the 810 versus the 710 versus the stock turbo, all running E70 files. You get 182 wheel horsepower more with an 810 versus the stock turbo and 77 pounds feet of torque more with the 810 versus the stock turbo. Here's the graph as they line up against each other. You can see the stock turbo spools way quicker. It hits as early as 2400 RPM but it just plummets up top. The power is not there like it is on these hybrid turbos where they pull so much stronger. So if you're looking for something for all out power, all out speed, these hybrid turbos are fantastic. If you're looking for really, really quick low down torque response as a daily driver, that stock turbo is hard to beat. So now that you guys have seen this comparison, I have one more for you to wrap this up. So now I'm gonna do something that I don't normally do on this channel, and that is compare one dyno result to another from two separate cars on two different days. I would never normally do this, but I just thought for interest's sake, you might think this is pretty cool. So Dave from Need For Built YouTube channel came out and joined me at a dyno session that I held months and months ago. Significantly warmer day. Today is much cooler, much colder, which will play into the results. But we're both using a TTE 810 with integrated engineering stage 3 plus e70 software check out how different these results are OTS off the shelf canned tune and these are drastically different here it is my s4 versus his sq5 I made 635 today he made 643 I made 627, he only made 619. Similar, but not identical. Again, different cars, different days. But why I'm showing you this is look at the spool difference, guys. Significantly different between the two cars on different days, running very, very similar off the shelf tunes. Just an incredible difference. Look at how much longer it takes for mine to spool. His is on it much sooner. Then when we look up top, Calibration for the wheel size, again, you have to take that into play, but you can see his is making a bit more power throughout the mid-range, and then he has a little bit of a hump, whereas mine stays a bit flatter. So it goes to show how on different days, different cars, different operation, how a single off-the-shelf tune can definitely impact the car differently and provide significantly different results. 635 wheel horsepower, 627 pounds-feet of torque. Holy shit, guys. For sure this is gonna be a nine second car now. I can't freaking wait for it to dry up. It's disgusting here in Vancouver. It's cold, it's wet. So I got a few more months before it dries up, gets a bit warmer and we'll be able to get it back to the track and see what we can do. Slap some drag radials on it, get some weight out of it. How damn quick can I get this thing to go? Nine, eight, nine, seven? Like, is that realistic now? That curve looks healthy as you know what. I'm really excited to see what I can do with this car this year. So. It goes to show that I was completely and utterly wrong again. This has nothing to do with the tuning and had everything to do with that valve float. So the back pressure I was seeing was too high in the 710. It is much lower with the 810. And in turn, the car is making a ton of power, a ton of torque, and it is really fun to drive. <laughs> so I hope this provides you guys all the information you need showing the comparison between a stock turbo 710 and 810, all using E70, how it shows the difference in power, how it hits, how it stays on, how the torque drops, how the horsepower drops on a stock turbo versus a hybrid turbo. And in turn, now you know what my car makes. And I'm hoping that I can get out there and see what it can do in the quarter mile sooner rather than later. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time, take care.